Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Lindsay O'Rourke, the sweet hiker. And today we're going to cover a few knots. So we're gonna learn using rope. So today I have a synthetic rope that my son uses in scouts. And I wanted to go over some of the basic ones to learn. There are many different uses for all different types of knots and situations. So I'm just gonna cover a few of them. And I'm going to use the blue rope. Blue rope, red rope, I don't know, choose. Okay, so I'm gonna use the blue rope. So a few things that you need to know is that the terms of using a rope. So when you read instructions on how to tie rope, we're going to need to know what we're doing. So first we have the running end. The running end is going to be the end that's moving. So if I have a rope right here, the running end is gonna be the one that I am gonna be manipulating with my hand, okay? Uh, the standing end, I have the running end over here. The standing end is going to be the one that is going to have the loops used on. For the overhand loop, your running end is going to go over the standing end. For an underhand, it is going to go under. This is a bite. A bite is a loop that you have created right here. This is a bite. The space between is an eye. The space between is the eye. A turn, so when it says to turn over something, you're going to have your rope turn underneath and up. And so the running end goes in the opposite direction. To have a round turn, you complete that turn and now your running end is going parallel with your standing end. There's um, also hitches, bends, and dressing a knot. So we're gonna go over a lot of different hitches. So, um, but first, I'm gonna start with the most basic. We're gonna do a square knot. A square knot is where you are putting two ropes of the same size together. So I have two ropes of the same diameter. So if you're looking at them, they are the same size, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm wanting, with this square knot, I am tying two ropes of the same size together. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go right over left, left over right. So in my right hand, I'm going over my left hand rope. So right over left, left over the right. And we pull the ropes at the same time. And it kind of makes this cool little locking, it looks like a locking mechanism. And so when I pull on this knot, they're just gonna get tighter together. So that's how you join two different ropes of the same size. So let me go over that again. A square knot is right over left, left over right. My next knot that I'm going to show you is the two half hitches. Two half hitches, this is where you're going to use it, um, where you're going to be able to adjust the knot and the loop together. So I'm going to, I have my, my post here, um, whatever I'm, I'm using it for, um, you know, tying something, a string to, okay. So I'm going to go over, I'm in my running end over my standing end. I'm going through the loop and going back over, over the standing end, under the standing end, back into the loop. So this is now adjustable. And it's very adjustable, even though there's a knot here. See this knot? Does, if for any of you scouts out there, does this not look like anything else? It also looks like a clove hitch. So basically you are tying a clove hitch 
around your same rope, okay? So I'm taking my running end over my standing end. I kind of create a, a P, right? A rope looks like a letter P. I'm going to bring that rope under into the hole and I'm going to go over and under. So like I said, this is going to be adjustable, but once that knot finally gets down to the post, I can give this a really good pull and it's not gonna go anywhere. All right, on to the next one. The next one, we're going to do the tot line hitch. It is very similar to the two half hitches. So I'm gonna bring my rope again around my pole. I'm going to cross over my standing end going to go through the same loop. I'm going to go over the same standing end again. Okay. Uh oh, I didn't give myself enough. <laughs> okay, let's start over. So um, make sure that you give yourself enough line to work with. Uh, the tall line hitch is often used when you have a tent stake. So if you're trying to stake down your lines and you don't have a way to like hook it on or whatnot, this is a great way. So just imagine this is the, the, the line coming from your tent around your tent stake, okay? So I'm going to cross over, okay? We're gonna go cross over the standing. The running end is going through the loop. We're gonna go around the standing end again, through the loop again creating that, the P again, the letter P, and crossing in. So what this is gonna do is you're going to be able to adjust this knot and being able to loosen it, or you can pull it tighter this way and tighten it, so now it's becoming more taut against your tent, all right? But when I pull, let's see, this should be tight enough. So when I pull on this, I can pull on this pretty good and it's gonna go nowhere, okay? But it's gonna be easily adjusted. The next one I'm going to cover is the timber hitch. This is, for an example, using it, dragging a log or tying it to something without wanting to create too much tension around that object. So in my case, I'm going to take my running end around my timber, my log, whatever it may be. Uh, let's see. Oh, because I normally go this way. I don't know why I switch hands on this side. All right. So with the, the timber hitch, timber hitch, just think timber, log, right? Okay. Timber. Yes. All right. Just like that. <laughs> so what you're wanting to go is your running end is going over your standing. It's going to come under and it's going to wrap around itself right here. Okay. So basically you're creating this, this loop that your standing in is able to go through. So when you tighten this down, you're gonna be able to tighten it real good and then pull on it like this. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna tighten down a lot and it's gonna be easily undone by just pulling that rope back through the eyelet, through the eye. So I'll switch hands, okay? So we go over the standing and we just start wrapping ourselves around the line, just like that. So as you can see that the, my left hand, the standing in is able to be adjusted. And when it locks down, it's not going to put immense pressure on that object. A um, quick way of doing this is by, if you're able to, let's see here, is taking this, and so what do I do? 
So a quick way of doing this is in my left hand, I'm gonna put this like this so that the line doesn't go everywhere, okay? A uh, quick way of doing this is getting your line, um, making like a little fish, see it makes a fish, but making sure that the, the running end is below your standing end. And I'm gonna do a couple of twists. I'm gonna twist it towards myself one, two times. This is if I'm able to um, put the, if I am I'm able to throw this through myself. See, it's the same, same deal. So once again, that was, woo, it's falling. Okay. And then twisting it towards myself and then putting the line through. We kind of already discussed the clove hitch. The clove hitch is basically the starting point of going someplace else or tying more knots if you're doing a pioneering project. This is one that you would start your pioneering project with on your pole. But in this case, um, I'll, I'll show on the post here, but also show uh, the viewer here as well. So for the clove hitch, I'm gonna go around my pole. I'm crossing over, crossing over the standing end, and then I'm gonna go under the X that I just created here. So when I'm making this, it makes, it looks like an, an X almost, but my two lines are running in the middle. So these are gonna go nowhere. I am gonna be able to pull this tight and I'm gonna can wrap it around other poles. For the bowline, there's a handful of different ways to do this. You could do this without going around anything. You can do this. Um, uh, the one-handed around survival skill style, or you can tie it when you're going around an object as well. So the, the bowline, you wanna bring your hand on top and rotate it upward and giving it a thumbs up, okay? And you're gonna take your running end. Some would say the rabbit comes up through the hole, runs around the tree, and goes back down into his hole, and then you pull, and you have your bowline knot. Okay. Once again, you have your rope, turn it around, give it a thumbs up. You're gonna go, the rabbit's gonna come up through the hole, around the tree, and then back down into his hole. You create your bowline. So what's um, unique about this knot is that this knot is going to be a loop that is not, it, it holds itself under friction and friction is what makes these knots not move anywhere. So um, it creates a loop that will not be adjusted and you can put a significant amount of force onto this line by pulling it. The quick way that I do it, this is my super fast way, is I have my palm up I rotate my hand. I grab that standing line here. It basically creates a slip knot. And then I take my running end through, put the running end back into my hand, and then I just pull like this and it creates the bowl in. Here, I'll do that again. So palm up, rotate. I'm gonna grab that standing end in my hand, create the slip knot, put the running end through, back into my hand, and I pull and it pops. And this knot pops over and it creates the bowl in. So that's the super fast way, okay? And then when you're on a post, you put your rope around the post, do the same thing, rotate, grab that rope here, right? Standing end goes through, put, put the, uh, the running end goes through, the running end goes back into my hand, and then I'm gonna pull on this and it pops and it creates your bowl in. So I now have very tight, very strong, and it's not going to 
adjust in any way so I can pull this in all different directions and it's not going to go anywhere. All right, uh, a sheet bend, you can be putting together two different types of rope um, of different sizes. Um, for the instance of my instruction right now, I'm going to use two different color ropes. They are the same size, but we're gonna just work with that. So I'm going to create a bite in my blue rope hand. And then my other one, I'm gonna go up through up through the loop, through the bite, around the whole object, around both, both lines, and under. I'm gonna do that again. I create a bite in this hand. I bring my second rope through the top, around the two, left hand ropes back over the blue rope no that's not yep yeah yeah okay <laughs> let's do it again through the gonna have our red rope go through the bite around the two loops i'm gonna go back under the rope so this is going to join these two knots, usually of a different size, but in this case, they're the same size. So I just want to encourage you to continue to practice your knots. The best way to continue to remember them is by teaching others. So keep practicing them, make it muscle memory, make it where you can do with your eyes closed. It's your best way to learn your knots. Um, once you learn those knots, you'll see opportunities around the house, at work, at school, I don't know, like different places that you're able to use these knots. Thanks for watching this video. If there's something that you'd like to see, put it in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. We'll see you together next time. Hi, guys.